Bacula Enterprise Edition to the rescue. Welcome back to the Bacula Systems video series. This video will explore how the Bacula Enterprise Edition Kubernetes plugin and Bacula Enterprise Edition itself can help you protect your entire Kubernetes infrastructure. Let's begin with a quick overview of the Kubernetes architecture. On the left-hand side of this diagram is the Kubernetes control plane. The control plane includes the stateful etcd database, as well as the key stores that allow authentication between Kubernetes components. Regardless of how redundant or distributed your infrastructure may be, it's a good idea to have offline backups of these critical components to ensure that you can securely recover them in the case of data corruption or loss. Bacula Enterprise's advanced scripting engine allows you to automate the protection of these critical components. Next, we'll discuss the backup of the data itself. Within your Kubernetes architecture, you'll have one or more namespaces distributed across one or more nodes, each running one or more pods that provide the services to your customers. The pods themselves are created and destroyed at will by Kubernetes and are designed to be stateless and not normally backed up. However, pods are often assigned storage, either via static provisioning or dynamic provisioning, that allows them read-write access to a data store somewhere. While it's common practice to simply back up the data store, the Kubernetes plugin allows you granular access to back up pods and namespaces along with their volume claims from within Kubernetes and without accessing the data store itself. This allows granular backups of your pods and their PVCs to an external data source, and also allows you to create recovery points in time for audit and compliance purposes. Let's see how this works in reality. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the description of the container we're trying to back up. It's a simple Nginx image mounting user share Nginx HTML from the node one local persistent volume claim. And in the right-hand window, you see Bacula's B console text command console and the commands needed to manually run the backup job of this pod. It's important to note that everything you see here can be scripted and included in your automated workloads. Once the job is finished, you can see the job log that shows the number of files backed up and the amount of data. And also, importantly, you can see the log lines that indicate that the pod itself was backed up, as well as the persistent volume claim associated with the pod. Next, let's look at the restore process. We can initiate the restore from bconsole or externally with a one-line command if we know the job ID. Bacula then queries the catalog and creates a browsable directory structure that shows the contents that were backed up by the job. From this, we can browse and choose what to restore. In this case, you can see that we've backed up the YAML configuration files for the pod, as well as a tar file containing the contents of the volume claim that was associated with that pod. The pod and the volume claim can then be restored into your Kubernetes cluster, or can be restored onto a file system for direct access, which is what we're demonstrating here. This file can be restored to any client on your network. Skipping ahead just a bit, you can see that when we've extracted the tar file, it contains index.html that was the entire content of the persistent volume claim at the time of the backup. As you can see, Bacula Enterprise Edition and the Kubernetes plugin provide you many ways to protect your containerized workloads and your Kubernetes cluster itself. At the time of this recording, Bacula Enterprise Edition is the only enterprise-grade backup software to provide this functionality. Contact us to learn more about how we can help you to protect your entire environment from top to bottom, and check out the free trial on our website to see Bacula Enterprise Edition in action. Thank you for watching.